All right, so now it's time to add our icons to our search bar. And uh, for this clone, I'm going to be using uh, Font Awesome. So Font Awesome is an icon set, amazing icon set with over uh, 7,800 icons to choose from. It's wide, I love it. Um, I can find pretty much any icon I'm looking for. Um, and there's just uh, an insane variety of them, including branded icons and things like that. So um, you can create an account for free. And when you do, um, you will get a uh, CDN, um, which is really just a um, static URL that you'll be able to use to reference the Font Awesome library. Um, so once you have that, you can add Font Awesome to Builder, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so in Builder, you're going to come over to the left panel and go to Page Headers, and you're going to add a new page header. And I'm going to call this Font Awesome. And I'm just going to paste in uh, my CDN. And I'm just going to paste in uh, my little code snippet that, that loads uh, my Font Awesome library. And I'm going to create the page header. And then I'm going to tell it that I want it to load in the studio um, and load on all root pages. Um, this makes it just really easy for me to build in the studio without having to preview the page to see how the icons look. So I'd like to have that load in the studio. So once I have that uh, loaded, I can now add icons to my page. Um, so I'm going to want to put icons inside of this search bar. And the way I do that, um, with Font Awesome, you can use um, a few different element types um, to add your icon. Um, I like to use just a text span element. So I'm going to drop this in here. And um, I'm going to remove the display text because um, I don't need that. And um, I'm going to come over here to the styling section. And under external class reference, I'm going to put in the font awesome um, icon attribute. So if I go, for example, I want to find like a search um, icon. So if I cl click on search in font awesome, it will show you here this little um, HTML attribute, this is what identifies um, the icon uh, to the Font Awesome library that I loaded into my page header. Um, so I already know um, which icon I want, so I'm just gonna load in my magnifying glass here. Um, so now I want to um, style, style this uh, magnifying glass as well. Um, so I have a color that I want to use, and I'm going to add that to my styling. So under topography, I'm going to go to color and drop in the color that I want. And then I'm going to set um, some spacing. So um, again, I want to add a uh, margin on this. Uh, 20 pixels is too much. Maybe let's do 14. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, I can always move that around later. Um, so I have my icon. I'm just going to give this a name, icon search. Yeah, icon search. That way I can, in my element tree, um, I can see exactly what uh, what this icon is. So I've got my search icon now. Um, I also want to add a microphone icon, so I'm just going to duplicate this one. And I'm going to uh, call this one icon voice. And I'll paste in my font awesome tag for this, and you'll see that it changes to the microphone. And there's one more I want to add, um, which is the X icon or you know the clear icon. Basically, when you've typed in a search result and you want to clear it out, 
So I'm going to call this icon clear and the font awesome tag is actually times because um, it's like the time symbol. All right, now these are all scrunched together. That's obviously uh, not how I want this to lay out, um, but there's one more element we have to add before we um, fix the layout and that's the actual input for the search. So what I mean by that is right now we have a div that um, looks like a search bar, but you can't actually click into it. You can't actually type into it. Um, there's no search functionality and that's because you need an actual text input. So I'm going to add one more element, which is an input. And down here in inputs and fields, I'm just gonna use the text input and I want it after my search, but before my other icons. So here's my input field. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of styling to this. Um, first of all, on the size, I want to set the width to 100%. And this will just uh, make sure that it takes up the full space. And let's do this. Let's add our flex to this div. So I notice it's not laying out properly. So I want to hit flex and that will give it uh, this row layout that I'm looking for. So let's go back to our um, search input. And before I forget, I'm going to name this input search. All right, so um, let's fix this border. So it has a border on it right now. I don't want a border on it. Um, because I want it to look like it's part of my existing uh, search bar. And then I also want to set the font size to 16 pixels. So I have something a little larger. Now that's starting to look a lot better and I have something I can type into and you see how that works. So it's looking good. Let's go ahead and take out the default uh, placeholder text since Google doesn't have that. And lastly, I'm going to format my icons so they have some um, padding and some, some margin. Um, so let's go ahead and set, um, let's do our search. So it's just too close to the input right now. So I'm gonna add a 20 pixel uh, margin on the right just to push that search bar over a little. And then for my clear and um, voice icons, I'm gonna add the same thing. So on clear, I want this to, to have a spacing where it's 20 pixels away from that, search, that, that voice icon. And on the voice icon, I want it to be about 20 pixels from the edge of the search, I mean of the uh, input bar. So now that's looking good, spacing looks right. Um, I think this will do the trick. Um, now, a couple things before I add the functionality to it. Um, this clear X that will uh, eventually X out our selection. Um, I really want this to, um, well, actually all of these, I want to have the cursor change when you mouse over them so that the user knows um, that it is something that they can click on. So um, I'm gonna come here to cursor and pointer and change the cursor type to the pointer. And let's do that for these others as well. Pointer. Pointer. So now when you mouse over them, you know these are buttons that you can click on. And then the last thing I'm going to do is on this clear, um, because this is something that uh, will only display once we start typing, I'm going to actually hide this by default. So under display, I'm going to click this uh, hide. And now our icon is there. It's just hidden at the start. Um, now, one nice thing about Builder um, that I'm going to leverage for uh, this tutorial is if you've got a element that you've built like this search bar and you put a lot of work into it and you want to reuse it, you can uh, turn this into a block. 
Um, and what that will do is that'll allow you to reuse it in other areas and other pages um, in your application. So I'm just gonna select this whole div search bar. And then on the properties panel in the upper right, there's a option to set this as a block. So I click that and now I'll see it change to remove from blocks. And if I go to my search results page, you know, I wanna have that search bar up here again, um, right after the image. So I can come here to blocks and I'll see sort of the builder provided blocks. But if I scroll to the very bottom under custom, I see my own block uh, div search bar. So I'm gonna take that and drop it into my header. And now I've got uh, a block in here. So a couple things. First, we need to fix the size of this logo um, because it is trying to go full height. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to hard code this. Not the best way to do it, but I'll hard code that. Um, inside of our header, we've got uh, flex, row let's make sure that's what we want and yeah flex row and then we want to align items in the center like that uh, we've got our direction oh and then we have this margin uh, here that we put on um, our item before we made it a block and so I just want to remove that because on this page, I don't need the 30 pixel um, margin up above, uh, but I do want to put a margin on the left side. So I'm going to do like 40 pixels um, just to space it out from the logo. So now I've got uh, my search results bar, or my, I should say my search bar um, on my search results page and my home page. We've got icons um, and we are now ready to make these pages dynamic and start adding some um, data to our database and some actions and flows.